So you're snow blowing along and you go to push down on your auger lever and you notice that your augers aren't spinning. Or you go to push down on your drive lever and suddenly your snow blower isn't going anywhere. You might even have smelled some burnt rubber too. Whoa! Hate to break it to you, but you probably busted a belt. Bruh. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace them. So stick around. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear, I'm JB. Giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. And if you are feeling the vibe and you wanna be part of the tribe, subscribe. Now your snowblower may vary, but the general procedures here will remain the same. Here we have a John Deere TRS-27. Hello dear. And this machine busted a belt last season. If it's green and yellow, it's usually expensive. The owner asked me to replace both the auger and the drive belts for them, and it's usually recommended to do both at the same time in the owner's manuals. <laughs> Seriously, just do them both. New belts usually aren't too pricey. Just take your old ones off, take them to a local hardware store or a repair shop, and they can usually measure them up and match them up for you. Or if you can match up the model numbers, you might even be able to find them on Amazon too. Here we go, first step, always unplug your spark plug to prevent any unnecessary startups. Now I don't wanna make you nervous or anything, but this isn't brain surgery. We're working on a snowblower here. We do have to split this guy down the middle. The next thing in your way may be your chute. If you have any connecting linkages like this, you'll have to disconnect them so this snowblower can split in two. To disconnect this arm right here, all we gotta do is pull out this pin. Grab it with your pliers, out it comes. Drop down your bolt here in the middle. There it is, unhooked. We're also gonna remove our cable up top to give ourselves some additional slack. I even unhooked the cable from this slot up top just to give us even more slack. You cannot be too careful. Next up, what we gotta do is take off this belt cover. You have one 3 8 bolt here on this side and another 3 8 bolt here on the other side. Simply just loosen those bolts up. You do not have to remove them and this cover will come right off. There we go, out of the way. Now we have access to our belts. The owner gave me this busted belt to show you. This was right here. This is their auger belt and it rested right inside this pulley. We're gonna replace this one and then we're also gonna replace the drive belt here in the back. Next you wanna place a stool or a chair behind the handlebars cause as this tips down, you're gonna want something for it to land on. Next to split this machine in two, what we must do is unhook these two bolts on this side, two bolts on this side, and there is an additional bolt here at the bottom on each side as well. We're just gonna let the whole machine open up on those bolts. We shouldn't have to remove those bolts. These are half inch bolts, so just start taking them out. That's one, that's two, that's three, and four. So now this machine's about to split in two. I'm just gonna lift up here with my hand on the pulley brake, and then this whole thing is just gonna slide apart, just like that. Next, I have a belt guide here. I'm gonna get this out of the way. It's a half inch bolt. It's a good idea to remember the exact location of this, and if you have to, take a photo of it. Out it comes. Looks like we had another belt guide here on this side, but it looks like it broke off possibly when that belt broke. I'll have to let the owner know about that. And at the moment, there is a lot of tension here still on this drive belt. We need to get this off. And in order to do so, what we must do is release this spring right here at the bottom. What I'm gonna do is grab onto the spring itself with some needle nose pliers, pull up and unhook that spring and just let it hang off to the side. Now I can push my tensioner pulley way out of the way and I got lots of room now. From here, I'm just gonna take this belt and unhook it and then and off it comes. Okay, let's take a quick minute and have a look at these belts. This here is our original auger belt. You can see where it snapped completely. And then here on the other side, it looks like it was ready to go as well. This is our new auger belt. And in case you have this model snowblower and you're interested in the model number of this belt, here it is, 4LK370. It is a half inch by 37 inches. Now here's a look at our drive belt. Now it may not have ripped completely, so you might think, oh great, that belt's still in good shape. But as we inspect this closer, have a look. One area ready to snap, another one just behind it. Overall, this belt had very little life left. Here's the new drive belt. It is a 3 8 by 33 inches. Time out. Before I slide on these new belts, would you mind taking a super quick second to smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm? Thanks. Now we're gonna take our new drive belt. This one has to go the furthest back, slide it into this compartment, and then I'm gonna put it over the big pulley and then onto the smaller pulley in the back where it belongs. If you slide it on the big pulley first and then try to get it over this pulley up top, it's gonna be really difficult. So slide it on the small pulley first and then work it onto this big pulley down here. We're gonna fit it into the track of the big pulley now. Then from here, what I like to do is just pull up on the belt and then it'll eventually lock itself into its track. Yep, there it is, all lined up. Now remember this tensioner pulley here and the spring that I dislodged earlier? Well, we're gonna reconnect that so that way the tension on this belt is back to normal. So what I'm gonna do here is take my hand on this side, push the tension on the pulley, reach down, grab my spring at the very top with my pliers, and then hoop it. 
through, and voila, just like that, it's that fast, it's back on. The new drive belt is all set. Now before I put the auger belt on, I have to take this belt tensioner right here and pull it back a little bit. As you can see, it's set about halfway. That's gonna be too much on the new belt. I'm gonna take a 9 16 wrench and loosen that bolt up. Just gotta loosen it a little bit, now I can slide it back. Now we're gonna take our auger belt, we're gonna drop it into this compartment and hook it on to our big pulley here for our augers. Next, this is one of those jobs that if you have an extra set of hands, it is very helpful, but what I'm gonna do here is take my belt and clamp it tight just like so take a pair of clamps and squeeze it on just like that. That'll make my next part a lot easier. Now what I'm gonna do is slide both ends of the machine back together and install one bolt so that way this thing doesn't come apart. Bring it back together and install one bolt. Ratchet it down and good. For the time being, I'm just gonna install one more bolt here on this side, just so we don't stress out that other one over there. Tighten her down. Good. Now we can unclamp our belt, feed it over the pulley, and as you can see, it is a snug fit here. It's barely going into this channel where it needs to be. Well, if you pull on your starter recoil, you gotta watch your fingers here, and you give it a turn, that belt should go with it, just like that. From here, I'm gonna set my belt tensioner to about one third. This is where I start to feel a little resistance on the belt. Hold it in place and snug it down. Good. Make sure your pulley still spins freely. For the next part, I made sure my pulley brake is back where it belongs, right in this channel. And remember that bracket that broke off here? I'm actually gonna take this old one out because this one is snapped off. Be sure to reinstall your belt guides next. And good. Now, if you have multiple belt guides, make sure you reinstall both of them. Over here, you have this pulley creating a lot of tension against this bigger pulley up top. Over here, there's nothing. So to have a belt guide here, I feel is more important. So I moved it there. This should help keep that belt from slipping off on this end. Now before I go and reinstall the cover and attach the chute back together, this would be an excellent time to test it out. Reinstall the spark plug and start her up. So there we go, both belts are looking good and operating great. Let's button this baby up and get everything back together. Now let's install our last two bolts that hold this whole thing together. Good, that one's tight. Now our last bolt, and good, nice and tight. Pop on the cover, tighten each bolt down. That's one, and two. Time to reconnect the chute, slide in your pin, and snap her down. Reconnect the cables up top, push her down, that's in, and reconnect your cable. Done. Side note, if you're having issues with your belts being too tight or too loose, you can either adjust the tension pulley or you can adjust the cables here in the back by these springs. To tighten or loosen these cables, simply reach down underneath these springs and tighten or loosen the nut inside. Again, your machine may vary. These seem pretty good with very little slack, so we're good to go. This John Deere is all set with new belts and is ready to go back to its owner. Don't forget to give me one of these and be sure to check out more cool Garage Gear videos right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the garage.